96 and welcome back to a texturing of a head and eyeballs. Uh, when we're done with moving our texture around, you can see where that um, extra neck space really pays off because we have a whole lot less stretching uh, of the UVs. And we should probably even make the neck even have more space to it. Um, because there's still some stretching um, in in the neck space right here, especially by the chin. Um, just realize how much needs to be covered, and it should probably be another 200 pixels or so down there. Uh, when we're done, though, it'll look something like, well, let's pick the one that doesn't have watermarks on it. Something like this. Uh, now we're going to work on these uh, very alarming looking eyeballs. And the process to create those using procedural textures. And really the intent of this isn't to show you how to do eyes. Because, let's be honest, this technique doesn't produce the most realistic looking eyes. There's better ways to do it. So let's start by... Uh, okay, the, the idea is to show you how to use the hypergraph and nodes in it. So let's just display the eyeballs. And in fact, we only want one of the eyeballs. Let's pick the left eye. Um, and let's create a layer from this selected one and hide the rest. Okay, now if you switch to wireframe mode, you can see that this actually consists of two eyeballs here. And we're going to want to separate them physically first. And what I did to do that uh, was I selected the one that does will make it look white and we can actually do that by L and B dragging over it and then picking it and now we need to unparent them just for the time being Let's see what we're doing here parent to world preserve position apply and we just want the one that's got the dent in it and I hit three there to smooth shade it you can just do it on that one. It doesn't cost any extra resources. Uh, and I've still got the wireframe off. And the reason why we turned the wireframe off earlier was so that we could see the UVs and what we were doing on it. And the wireframe kind of obscures that. Um, okay. So now we'll open up the hypergraph. And we'll get to work on it. Let's clear the graph. Hitting the little eraser button, you can also go to graph, clear graph. And let's just start afresh. Uh, we'll pick a layered shader and click the object and then just hover over it, RMB, assign material to selection. Click the input and output thing. Um, okay, that might have been a mistake. Let's go back a ways. Hmm. Let's just do this. Ah, no, don't do that. What? Ugh, okay. Um, let's create a layered shader. Let's take a look at our layered shader here. Uh, as you can see, I should... Yeah, we got plenty of time. Uh, it starts out with a green thing, and if we render it, we'll see the default um, 
layered shader there, and you know if you've messed that you've messed up when you just see that. That's the um, idiot warning there. Let's create a blend um, and add it to this layered shader. And this is going to be our pupil. Rename RMB click rename. and click our layered shader MMB on there drag it over to this spot not actually this but this spot and release then we're going to MMB on it click drag drop and delete it by clicking this um, our final result should look something like like here we go we want our final result to look something like that um, and more than that we want to see what our hypershade looks like this is what our network is going to be like so uh, we are already starting to notice a few differences between this one and the one that we made Namely, that there's double arrows between this stuff, and there's only single yellow arrows with mine. And we can correct that view uh, by going to RMB hold, merge connections, and then it'll show us all the number of arrows corresponding to the number of connections between these things. And there's three connections to this one, so there's three arrows. Uh, I want to keep things simple, so let's merge our connections for now. Go to graph, rearrange graph and select all the ones and then hit F to see everything that's there. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, now we want to refer back to our thing here and we're going to create the pupil. Uh, let's make a color ramp here and we can do that by clicking the pupil blend and clicking the color box, a little checkered thing next to it and that'll let us add something to it. And we can create all kinds of textures and stuff to it, but let's just create a ramp because we're going for a very specific effect here. All right, now none of this is showing up in the perspective view, um, and none of it is showing up in the orthographic view. But you can see what's going on if we make a render of it. And obviously that's wrong because it's rendering along the V axis instead of the U axis. And this is actually the top of the sphere here. Um, so let's go to the ramp and change it to be a let's change our ramp so that it's a U ramp. Render it again, and now it's rendering along the right axis, so our pupil will be right at the top of that sphere. We want to make this so it's white for the whole eye, and black for the pupil, and then white again just so it has a little highlight to it. Yeah, let's make it white, and then the inside part white. We're clicking that box there every time and selecting a color, and then we just move our mouse. We don't actually have to click anything to get it out of that box. Let's do another render here so we can see what it is uh, that we're going for. Yeah, see, it's mostly black, and then we've got the white at the center. Now we've got a whole lot of white, and then a little bit of black, and then some white again. And if we want a really sharp drop off between the two, we move these closer together so there's less of a gradient. And we can even make it so it's pretty much a completely abrupt transition to that black. Alright, that's too much white. 
and we can actually make it so that pupil takes up a lot more space and doesn't just have a um, gradual drop to that uh, white there. So we're already looking a lot better and we don't have to make this perfect because this is just for demonstration only. And we're just showing how, how nodes work and how adjustment of ramps works. All right, so we'll refer back to this. And what we're gonna do next is create an iris. And we want those little um, radial streaks that are in the iris. And we only wanna make it so it's a certain portion of the eye. So we'll add a fractal to do that and then make it so it's got a whole lot of repeats to it so it's mostly um, squished together lines. We want to deliberately distort that fractal. And a fractal is, is a pretty random pattern. So it's good for those natural looking things. How much time we got here? 11 minutes. All right. Uh, we're probably gonna have to continue this in, that, in another video. Uh, but for now, let's rearrange our graph and just add as much as we can in this. Okay, so layer, blend, rename. Uh, let's name it Iris. And then let's add it to our layer. Click the layer, MMB, drag it in, click it, MMB move, drop, and now let's render. And oh, oh no, no, what, what do, do we do? do? Our, our beautiful pupil, pupil that, that we worked, worked so hard on is gone. gone. Well, that's, that's just because um, we created, created a new blend and it's on top of it. it. See, the one that's on top is going to be the primary display, and if you want anything to display below that, you've got to add transparency. That's why if you look in this hypergraph, uh, this ramp is actually transparency, and it's letting, it's creating a hole. Um, anywhere there's white, there will be uh, alpha. Anywhere that's black, it'll be, well, actually, anywhere, let's see. Yeah, yeah, anywhere that it's, it's, it's white, it'll be alpha. Anywhere that it's black, it'll show what's in the color node. And anywhere that's white, it'll be alpha again. So let's just stop the video here and uh, we'll pick it up in the other one. Um, we can do one other thing really quick, which is adjust some of the specularity on it. And if you look at an eye, they have very sharp, small little highlights to them. Um, so let's add the, make the incentricity very small, specular roll off one, so it's very abrupt, and specular color white. So we get a very sharp, small, um, white highlight to it. So select the pupil blend, close the material attributes, go to specular shading, go to 0.02, specular roll off be one, specular color, and I'm just typing those in will be white. white. And let's, let's save the whole thing because, because we haven't done, done it and uh, my eye crashes a whole lot. So, so that's, uh, that's, that's it for this video. video. I'll, I'll see you in the next one where we'll finish up the eyeballs. eyeballs.